So did you guys know that it took over six years uh, for haagen to develop their strawberry flavored ice cream? This is just like a showcase to uh, show that they always prioritize quality over quantity. So hi, my name is Nicholas O'Clary and this is Catherine Zayas. And today we're gonna to be presenting uh, how haagen makes their ice cream throughout the history of their company. So we're gonna do this by talking about three main points. The first point is how is their ice cream so good? And the second point is the history of haagen with the third point being what are they doing today, currently? And so the main takeaway that we want you guys to get from this presentation is a better understanding for how haagen created their ice cream throughout their history of the company. So, how is your ice cream so far? You guys liking it? Great. Good. Hell yeah. <laughs> so how, um, how is it so good? The main, the main factor of this is that they pump less air into their ice cream than other companies. Now this air in the ice cream is called overrun, and companies use it to hold the shape of their ice cream um, for as long as they can. Um, so most companies have about 100% overrun in their ice cream, while haagen has only 27%, according to ACS.org. Um, and now this means that haagen ice cream is not gonna last as long as other ice creams, and it's not gonna, you have to store it at a colder temperature than other ice creams. And the benefit of this is that the taste is obviously better than other ice creams. And with them putting less air in their ice cream, it leaves more, more room for them to put something called butter fat in their ice cream. Which brings me to the second point, is that haagen uh, most companies put about 10% butter fat in their ice cream, in their cream, um, which basically makes the cream as, like, as creamy as possible. And haagen puts about 14 to 16%. Um, so this not only um, makes their cream more creamier, but it gives it a more velvety and rich feeling, according to uh, thekitchen.org. And the final point is that since 2016, haagen has moved away from using GMOs. Um, they did it because of their statement, like their whole mission statement of they're trying to create the simplest flavors using um, the best ingredients they can, and they decided that GMOs were not the way to go with that. So they decided to switch off them. Now here's Catherine to talk about the history of Haagen-Dazs. Okay, so back in 1960, Ruben Mattis, the creator, started with three flavors, vanilla, chocolate, and coffee. Now, Ruben Mattis, he lived in Brooklyn, New York. And I know what you're thinking, where did the name haagen come from? It sounds super foreign. Well, the reason why he came up with that name, he wanted it to be a Danish sounding name to be tribute to the Jews of Denmark during World War II, which makes basically no sense. So haagen is not really a foreign name. It's not Danish, it's not German, it's not foreign at all. It's completely American made. And like we said earlier, it took six years to develop the strawberry flavor. The reason why is because Mattis was really unsatisfied with the strawberries that he was taste testing. And it took a while for him to find one that he really liked to put in his ice cream. In 1976, his daughter opened the first shop in Brooklyn Heights, New York, and it's still open to this day. 10 years later, in 1986, the company decided to, well, by then the company was a company, and they decided to create the bars that you're eating right now, the vanilla chocolate dipped ice cream bars, and they called it the Valentine's Day gift to the world. That was their little marketing ploy, which I thought was pretty adorable. And in 1991, five years later, they came up with their first frozen yogurt, which is a lot lighter than their ice creams for the health-oriented. Continuing on, so in 1993, two years later, the lactose intolerant like E found their refuge in sorbets, which are dairy-free ice cream types. Kind of, not really creams, but the people who love fruit and are lactose intolerant were able to seek refuge in that. In 1998, they decided to create a Latin-inspired ice cream, and so they did some research in South America, which they found they wanted to do dulce de leche flavored ice cream. And in doing so, they formulated a newer, thicker, stronger caramel that allowed them to produce it in their ice cream, especially because their ice cream is made differently. It was a lot harder for them to do it. If you compare haagen to say Breyers, Breyers caramel is gonna be super duper thin, and you look at it like a Haagen-Dazs container, and it's like 
this thick. And in 1998, they decided to, just kidding, that was what I just said. In 2008, they decided to help out their hardest workers, the honeybees. And they made their own little campaign to help save the bees. Five years later, in 2013, they tried to create a brand of gelato to rival Italian gelato, which was really weird, because you can't really do that. And in doing so, they created this brand. I don't remember, I don't know if you remember their commercials of people, just their mouths, saying something in Italian. You couldn't say it yourself. It was like, straps the cheddar or something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, so that was their way to rival and make their own gelato. And like we said earlier, in 2016, they cut out GMOs from all of their products as a way to really stay true to their mission statement and again, help the health oriented. So that brings us to what they're doing today. And they're still keeping true to eliminating the GMOs. And 10 years later, they've donated over a million dollars into bee saving related causes. And that brings us to our grand finale. So today we've talked about how haagen ice cream is so good by looking into um, how much air they've pushed into their ice cream to make it uh, stand out. We also talked about the history of haagen and how it got its iconic name. And finally, we talked about what haagen is doing today in helping the bees in the future. Does anyone have any questions? Got one for, okay.